So I'm Steve Schalheimer, superintendent at Elkhart Community Schools, and I've been superintendent for this urban school district for about 20 months now. Uh, prior to this time, I was a superintendent in the county uh, at a smaller rural school district. And it was actually in that smaller rural school district where we started having conversations about ways to meet the needs of students in social and emotional areas and in alternative forms of discipline and working with students. So I had first been looking at restorative practices and was, was becoming familiar with them as I was superintendent at Fairfield Community Schools. Mm -hmm. And we had had conversations there about trauma-informed practices and the role that CCJ and other restorative institutions could play. And it even come to uh, a circle meeting that was held at uh, the church here in Elkhart about restorative practices while I was still at Fairfield. Um, then when I came here and saw what was at work and, and the work that needed to happen on individual and institutional health in this district as I came on board, uh, it seemed natural to me that we would use restorative practices and continue um, training staff on trauma-informed practices and education in order to make sure that we were meeting the needs of our students. So I read up on that my own, on my own, became more familiar with the work of CCJ, and then brought uh, CCJ in to work with my leadership team and have kind of looked at it as a, a ring of concentric circles. So the idea being that you work really hard with our leadership team and we implement that and work on building trust and healing relationships within that team. And then we've pushed it out and have been doing those practices now with principals and work with the buildings as we layer that out. Knowing that, that some of the traditional ways of doing um, consequences for students um, haven't always worked. And uh, those were conversations that, again, we engaged in in my previous district. So in the sense of um, doing restorative practices of reintegrating students back into the classroom after a suspension or expulsion, um, looking at ways of, of doing alternative discipline was sort of the lens that we approached it. But then as I came to understand CCJ more and, and the work of restorative practices more, the whole notion of building community, being preventative on the front side, allowing students to have voice, um, building a sense of community really have become things that have become important to me and that we think about in terms of not trying to be reactive on the other side, but what can we do to be proactive mm -hmm. with our students? And so the sense of using circles, conflict coaching, being able to work through those things and better equip our administrators, our staff, our teachers to work with students and work through uh, de-escalation and ways of building that sense of community are all important. My district leadership team, when I came in, they, they were rather fractured and people were working very much in silos. So the work that we did my first spring here um, and even into the fall and, and the time pre-COVID um, really helped us build a, a strong team where there is a, a lot of trust. And I've had members of that team come to me and say, you know, we are in a place where we're working really well. And um, right before the start of this school year, when CCJ came and conducted that circle after we watched uh, the Hate You Give and had that circle, I had uh, a couple different people email me and say, I really appreciate the work that CCJ is coming in and doing and helping, and it's really helping our team be stronger and understand where each other's coming from. So that has worked great for our district administrative team to be fully functioning and, and on spot for where we need to be. What I've also seen um, is in, in some instances of some conflict coaching, it has helped cause some, some hot spots to, to boil down. Um, some departments and teams are working better. Um, I'm hearing from principals that they appreciate the opportunity to have the conversations with their staffs um, and make sure that everybody's heard. And then personally, some of the conflict coaching that I myself went through um, has just helped me manage situations better and work on um, framing some relationships better um, so that those are, are going much better. So when I came into the district in, in January, um, a year and a half ago, uh, I did a lot of listening in the buildings and I was hearing a lot about um, how, do we, how do we manage and work with students who are coming to us with X, um, trauma, language acquisition issues, behavior issues, those kind of things. 
So one of the goals that we set at that time was to work on our individual and institutional health. And so for me, I feel like we've done a lot of work in that area of rebuilding trust, again, equipping people to be able to manage situations, whether that's with student or staff. And right now, one of the things that we're really focusing on in this time of COVID and the uncertainty are flexibility, patience, and grace. Um, and we say those words a lot to each other. And so for helping us get to a better place and now to manage where we are, we really feel that that work has helped us be able to be in a place where we talk and listen to each other, where we collaborate and, and where we have a, a greater sense of empathy for where each other is. Then in our goals, district goals, entering this school year, um, one of them is to uh, help our principals be leaders for various things. So they're leaders for equity and they're leaders for social and emotional learning and they're leaders for um, sheltered immersion and English learners. And so our major pillars that we're working on as a district, we're wanting to help our principals become better leaders for that. And so the idea that we as a district team model uh, restorative practices and model circles. Uh, we just did circles over the past two days when our first administrative team meetings of where we did a check-in, where we asked administrators during this time, what are you missing? What have been positive relationships and things that either you've done for someone else or someone has done for you during this time? And then what do you need? And we went around the group and asked everybody to participate and people had an opportunity to share and be heard. So all of that helps us just function better in a time when we have to be listening to each other and we have to be collaborative. It was interesting yesterday that as we did the circle with, with the elementary principals and there are, there are district administrators in that circle, one of my assistant superintendents um, got to the edge of being teary as she was sharing something. And she said, I don't know what it is about these circles, but they always want to make me cry. And I have found two or three different times during participating in the circles that the depth of emotion and what it connects to in a way is greater than any other way of conducting a collaborative or, or just a, a solid, really listening conversation. And, and I, I can't peg that, but one of the administrative team meetings that we had one time was to go around the circle and, and I asked people, what are you afraid of? And it was at a time where I was feeling really overwhelmed by all of the things to come in and, and work on as a district. And, and I, I was on the edge of losing it and was just like, I'm afraid that I'm not going to be able to help fix it. Um, and to have that moment of vulnerability and to share that. And, and I see that among people, um, it, some reserved people, some, some hard people, that there is a real softening that happens in those conversations. And I definitely feel it myself. Um, in terms of the, of the conflict resolution work, to have me, I mean, I I'm, I'm try to be careful with my words and I, I think about what I say and, and write as an English major and English teacher, but to reframe my thinking around the way I answer people um, the way I, I try to reflect back to people and, and let them know I'm hearing what they say um, are some powerful things. And, and I get told frequently that people, when they come and talk to me, they really feel like I listen and I feel like I, I honed those skills so much more deeply through that work. And at a time when people are scared and anxious and where in public education we may not be able to pay them what they're worth, um, to treat them well as people is really key to, to our mission. So our, our feeling has been is that, I mean, we obviously as a leadership team need to know that, and then we're pushing that out to principals, and then we're wanting principals to incorporate that with their staff. Our, our goal is, is that our staff and our teachers in particular, if they feel that sense of belonging, if they feel like they're being heard, if they feel like these opportunities to resolve conflict or to heal harm and to work in circles and be heard, we're hoping that that feeling that they get and that validation that they receive would then transfer to their ability to do that with students and, and translate to say, if this does this for me, what's that going to do for my students? What's that going to do to empower them? 
with the goal being that then all students in that classroom have a voice, all students in that classroom have an opportunity to be heard, and all of them have a sense of, of community. And many teachers try to do that, whether that's through, a, a, you know, kind of informal community circles or a morning meeting, those kind of things. I What I'd like to see happen would be that to go one step further to make sure that we're giving, again, every student a voice and, and everything that happens. And I've said to many people that in, in the circle that we conducted after watching The Hate You Give, that, that where else could we have an opportunity to have a Latino woman who felt discrimination as a child sit four seats away from a former police officer and have the kind of empathetic and understanding and real conversation that we had in that circle of understanding where people are coming from. Mm -hmm. And that's so desperately needed for our children to learn and to model so that then they can become citizens in a, in a society of greater understanding. Well, I think it would have provided us an opportunity to where students who um, may not have a voice in other ways, uh, depending on their home circumstance or the, the things that they've experienced, that they get a sense of empowerment and a sense of agency from that, that they might not otherwise have within their lives. And that they begin to understand that I do have some control over what happens and I can learn to regulate myself better. And I can be mindful of where I am and what's happening. And it can begin to change the trajectory for them of maybe a, a sense of learned helplessness or a sense that they, they can't control anything in their life. Um, we know that many students um, don't see a future for themselves if they've been caught in a cycle. And so we really want to help break them out of that and provide them that through, through all the experiences we give, exposures and field trips and experiences they have through literacy, and now through these conversations and dialogues and ability to work with others, all of these things help breaking that and, and give them a sense of, of possibility and, and perhaps hope if they haven't had that. I think it's really interesting to see that um, in, in coming into a, a district where there has been a, a lot of, of harm done to people just through systemic practices or through um, maybe leadership styles of different people at different times, that this has really given me a sense of, of calm and an approach to doing that. And I'm really encouraged by the number of people within the district who were ready to, to gravitate towards this and, and do this. And then to have the partnership that we have with you and Erwin and Anna and everybody that we've worked with um, to come in and really say, how can we do this and how can we do this in a thoughtful way? How can we do it in an impactful way where we have capacity to do it? Um, has really been great. I mean, as, as always, we, we sometimes fear that things work slowly in education and it doesn't happen fast enough because we're talking about children and their futures and their development and we can't wait. Um, but I really do appreciate the thoughtful approach that has really happened and for people to begin to see the changes here and there and that it has made a difference here and for people to understand that. Um, and, and we take the baby steps to really be successful. Um, we talk in terms of our professional learning communities about going slow in order to go fast. Mm -hmm. And so I feel like the way that we've done this and with some hiccups because of COVID and periods where we, we had to put a, a hold on things, um, I still feel like we've got, we've got a good trajectory forward.